Hey everyone, it's Tracy. I wanted to jump over and show you how to enter your orders in a couple different ways to enter your orders um, after you've had a wine tasting. So actually sometimes at a in-person wine tasting, I like to take my laptop with me or my iPad uh, with a little keyboard on it, sometimes without the keyboard. Um, and that way people can enter orders right there on the spot. And then I'm actually done for the night when the when the wine tasting is done, I'm done. I can tell the host where he or she is at with their event, how much money they raised, if they need to hit a next goal, like what we need, still need for them to do. Um, so that's one way to do it is to make sure you take your um, computer or an iPad or even your phone with you to the event if it's in person that they can do. Now, if you're doing an in-person event, um, like a vendor event, and there's a lot of people there, I don't always recommend uh, being able to take orders on the spot, especially if you're doing it with a couple other people. So for instance, this last weekend, um, this is May in 2022, uh, a fellow CE and I just did a wine tasting together at a wine festival, um, but we split the orders at the end of the day. So we don't enter them while we're at the event. Now, if there was somebody at the event who wanted to order because they didn't want to do a paper order form, and write down their information and especially their credit card information, uh, then, you know, we did have an option for them to enter that information and take the order right then and there. You do want to have that option available because sometimes people don't shop the link once they get home. So you do want to see if you can do the order for them right then and there. And there's a on your phone or on your computer when you're entering orders, I always like to use an incognito browser or a private window so that way I don't save any of their credit card information. I'm going to show you how to do that now, as well as the best way to or enter the orders, I believe, I feel, is always to use the event link. Now, here's a little, here's a little, um, not a glitch, but here's a little segment to that. If they are an existing customer, if somebody is an existing customer with you or with somebody else within One Hope, because they can shop with whomever they want. Um, there was a time a few years ago um, that they were linked to that specific cause entrepreneur. So they might be part of the Grateful Club still, and then they were attached to that CE. If that happens to you and someone's shopping and they say, oh, they're already shopping with another cause entrepreneur, just take that person's email information and their name and email um, support at onehopewine.com. And then support will release that hold on that customer so they can shop with you. It probably won't happen to a lot of you because a lot of you are really brand new. Um, but there are a few of us that have been around and that we do different stuff at different areas and we cross, we have friends in common, that kind of stuff too. So sometimes it does happen, but they just have to release that person. And once they do, if they are an existing customer with One Hope, then it's always best to log into their customer account first, and then copy and paste the link that they're fundraising for so they can be linked together. Because otherwise it's the customers that are over here and the event is over here and they're not linked together because what happens is the events get closed at a certain time. So they're not always shopping with that same event because that's how their host gets the host rewards and that's how the cause gets the money is when that event is closed. So they're not always, the, they can always be a customer, but they're not always shopping an event, if that makes sense. So you want to log into the customer account and this goes the same for you as a cause entrepreneur, cause entrepreneur, log into your customer account, then copy and paste the URL into your browser and then that'll link the two together. And I'll show you what how that goes. So let me share my screen with you. So with that, keeping that in mind, um, when you log in as a cause entrepreneur, you will go into your CE dashboard. And back here, this is uh, where you find all your information. So if you're a brand new CE and this is the first video that you decided to watch, this is where you're gonna find all your information on One Hope. So definitely know where this page is and we refer to this as your dashboard or your back office, okay? Those are the two terms that we use mostly for this area. So this will tell you your name, if you're logged in as you, your CE ID number, which you do need to know. Um, 
this is your website. So this is your personal website that you can share on your socials, on your email address, anything like that. This is where people would go to shop with you anytime. This is not linked to a specific event. This is just your website for shopping. So this is what you always wanna make sure that you share with people. Because like I said before, events will close. Your website is always gonna be your website. So I recommend um, knowing what this is. So you have this handy dandy all the time. I like to keep the little note section on my phone and have all my links on there so I can just you know, send it to people, um, especially with my uh, current events that I have going on that I'm fundraising for. Uh, this also tells you your current rank, your PCV, where you're at with PCV. PCV is how you get paid. So you get paid 20% on this dollar amount. Uh, if this hits $1,500 in um, PCV, then you get paid 25% for the month. So it's good to keep track of where you're at with this and your rank, depending on where you're at and your fast start and all that fun stuff. Um, and the current OV, that just means your current overall volume. If you have a team, you will have that number be populated. If you don't have a team, don't worry about it. Um, so that's kind of like the 411 on this little section. This is your playbook. So this is where you get points at. Did you read this information? You know, click through here. There's a lot of information on here. I do it on my phone and I do it here. So it says I have 51 new ones, but I think I cleared a bunch of them off just yesterday. So we'll go through that. And also this shares all of your information impact to date. There's some great little tiles down here that tell you like what's coming up. Please, 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 as a new cause entrepreneur, check in here, read through this information. This is where you need to go. This is open 24 seven. It's here for you. Um, I do have another video on how to create your event. So you can watch that first, and then we can go into events on how to place your orders in your event, which is what we're going to do now. So the best thing to do is to go into the events section if you don't already have the URL for that specific event. So you will find the event that you want to shop in or that you're going to enter the orders for. So I'm going to say this one is the Lady Elks of Westchester. And this is a good example of what I'm going to do. So this one actually says that it closed on 521. But you can change this at any time. So if this event is technically closed and it's no longer accepting orders, well, actually, I'm going to push it out because I'm actually doing an event for them in June. So I'm just going to add it to this one because this hasn't hit the minimum of $500 in host rewards yet. So I want them to get more money. So I'm going to make this event stay open longer. So you're going to click the pencil. You're going to come down here and you're going to change the date. I'm actually going to change it to... June 29th. Um, I like to close things the day before the last day of the month. So then that way, I, when I close it on the morning of the last day of the month, depending on where you're at, if you close it on the morning of the last day of the month, uh, they will get their donation check the following month. So I always like to use as a rule of thumb, actually, the day before the last day of the month, try to get all of your business done. Try to get all your business done on June 29th or May 30th. Don't wait until that last day. It is very stressful for you, for your upline, especially if you're going for a big promotion or you're just trying to get in your last orders. Don't put that extra stress on you. Try to plan your month so you're getting stuff done the day before the last day of the month. Okay. And I know a lot of people get paid on the last day of the month, but if you can, if you already have it done, so everything's set, ready to go, you're minimum qualified at 300 or 1200 or 1500 or 600, whatever you need to hit, whatever your goal is that month, just make sure it's done before that day before the last day of the month, because trust me, you will want, you will want that to be done. Um, so anyway, I like to put the dates, uh, the day before the last day of the month. So I'm going to close this on the 29th actually. And then you can say save. Um, this little icon right here where it says show events re recent supporters, I like to have this unclicked depending on, you can ask your host if your host wants to show a scrolling list of who's supported. Sometimes that's good if it's a, a targeted kind of fundraiser because I might say like, oh, Barbara supported, oh, Carolyn supported, oh, Katie supported, um, you know, I guess I should support. But if it's something that's open for, like I work at a school and so I have like a quarterly um, wine link that's open, 
I don't really need them to know that, hey, Tracy ordered wine, Tracy ordered wine, Tracy ordered wine, um, or Samantha ordered wine, Samantha, 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 like they might be like, they might be judging. We don't want judging. So I always just unclick show events, recent supporters. So after you change the date, um, anything on here, you can just click save. And then it's been updated. And you can do that anywhere along here. As long as there's a little pencil, you can change all that information. Now you see, I changed it to 629 and it says it's accepting orders until July 20th. There's always a couple days. Um, it gives like 21 days after the actual date for you to still accept orders because there could be some lingering orders in there. If you are doing an in-home wine tasting, something with a person that's targeted that they're doing fundraising for something, it's always good to have an end date. And if you're event is today, it's always good to have, say like, oh, within three days, we're gonna close this party. Because the more people wait and the farther it gets away from the date of the actual event, the less likely that they are to actually purchase something. So just say, hey, we need to get in all the orders for this because the host needs that. You need to, you know, with your host coaching, tell your host that information be like, hey, collect any outside orders, make sure you get that in. Here's where you're at. You can always check on the host rewards section right here to see where they're at, where they're qualified at and who the host is and redeemable by. Um, and you can always change that as well. Uh, so now if I wanted to enter an order into this event, I would come in here to my event page. I would click up here, either event page, and then it gives me two options, copy the URL or view the event page. So if I'm in, if I'm logged in as a cause entrepreneur and I click view event page, this will link me to that event page. So see, it'll say shopping for myself and I'm helping to fund the ladies of Westchester Elks. Um, this is where it shows all the information. So this is really fun to make sure that you share with your host, like they can check the status of their event right here online. Now, if they are a customer, um, then you would wanna go over to the contacts, find their information in contacts, click on them to place an order. And then, and you'll see when you click on that person and say, place a new order, it's up in the right-hand corner, place a new order. And then you will want to copy and paste this URL. So I'm gonna copy this URL. And then you wanna copy and paste that URL into a new tab. And then it'll say shopping with Tracy Cox. I'm logged into my other personal account and who I'm helping to help fund. So it'll be on this page. So it links the two together. Does that make sense? It'll probably make sense once you do it. I'm not showing you all my customer information because I'm going to publish this on YouTube and I don't want everybody to see everybody's customers. It's fine if you see my information. But so you want to log into your customer account if they have one. If, they're, if they don't have one, then that's fine. You don't need to log in to their account at all. Um, if they don't have one or if they do have one, I also recommend using an incognito window. So brand new customers, never shopped with you before. That's where a lot of you are at with your businesses, your first events. Copy and paste that URL into an incognito browser. Why you wanna use an incognito browser is because it does not save the person's information to your account. It doesn't save their credit card information or anything like that either. So use the incognito browser. Um, if you don't have the little toolbar up here, you can also click the three little dots over here on Chrome to go to new incognito window. If you're on Safari, it's called a private browser. So you can click the private browser. You can do that on your phone or on your computer, whichever you prefer, or on an iPad or any mobile device. Um, and from here, it's you would simply just shop the website like you would normally, like how you place orders normally. I like to always go up to shop. And if they're doing a sale, click over here on the sale. Um, see what information we have for the sale going on. This is also a great place that you would find uh, wine pricing information. So if we ever launch a sale, you can come over here and be like, oh, what is the sales? Just look on your website. Literally, your onehopewine.com website or onehopewine.com will have all the information that you need to know about whatever our current promotions are for the customer, for customer facing promotions. Um, if you're someone asks, like, oh, well, 
can I mix and match my wines? Yes, you can mix and match your wines. You can do, you know, two red blends. You can do a couple, you know, of these Cabernets. When you add them to your cart down here at the bottom too, it tells you where you're at with your savings and where you want to get to your next one. So it's always fun to do that. So, and when you hit six bottles of wine, there's a purchase with purchase that pops up. So this is kind of fun. It's a half price duo, $47.50 for these two bottles of wine. And it's free shipping. You can add it to your cart or not. Um, do note that right now during the summer of 2022 for May, June, and July, we are having a summer of savings. So typically six bottles of wine is 10% off and 12 bottles of wine is 20% off. Now we're doing 15% and 25% off. So that's good to note that people have that option right now, or they can join the wine club. Um, and we can talk about that as well. Um, when you are going to check out, you can go to the little cart over here in the upper right hand corner, click the cart, it'll show you what's on here. Now it automatically says, yes, subscribe me to the wine club. If your customer does not want that, click this button off. If they do want the wine club, they can create their own frequency. Do they want it every month, every two months, every three months? And this is counted as a wine club. It doesn't have to be the curated option from our winemaker. It could be whatever they want and they still get free shipping and they get the wine club benefits. So it's super fun. So if you have customers that are like loving the Chardonnay and they're just going to be sipping Chardonnay all summer, you might want to sign them up for the wine club because then it'll keep on you know, being said to them once a month. Uh, the one caveat with the wine club is their first purchase will go towards the event. Their additional purchases do not count towards a 10% give back to any specific event. And you can't move it to an event because it's a, it is a subscription. Um, I know that's one of the comments that a lot of people have requested into One Hope is that, oh, additional wine club members or shipments should count towards a a nonprofit or an event. So I know that they're looking into that. So they'll see if they can figure that out or not. But currently it does not, subsequent shipments do not count towards a event and you can't move it into an event. Um, but their first one does, so that's good. And that's because the events close. So the events will close. So typically most of us are doing events. We have them open for like a couple weeks at a time and then we close them. So that's why it it can't, it's kind of like, it's a lot of work around on the back end. So just bear with them because hopefully that'll might change in the future. We don't know. Um, so wait, I'm gonna make sure that I click this off because I do not want to subscribe to the wine club at this time. You can see right here when you walk through and you're like, oh, maybe I should get, you know, I wonder how much it would be if I had 12 bottles of wine in my cart. This is something that I do sometimes at a in-person wine tasting when I have my computer there. I'll be like, well, you're at six and you really like this red blend. So, you know, you're going to save 25% right now. So let's just add six more to your cart. Oh, wait, I'm going to go back to, so right now they're at 180, they're at $161.50. So if we added more wine and got them up to 12 bottles, you'd see they're at 255. So it's a little less than a hundred more dollars for six more bottles of wine. So when you do the wine math, sometimes people are like, oh yeah, you know what, that's kind of good. Like, let me just get that. Cause then I don't have to reorder again in three weeks or whatever. Um, and that way it's still $15 shipping, regardless if they're doing four bottles, six bottles or 12 bottles. So they might as well order more and save on the shipping. And a lot of people are always worried about shipping. Um, our shipping is really inexpensive. Remember wine is heavy. Um, so $15 for, I mean, even a one bottle of wine is not bad because <laughs> it also has to be packaged a certain way. So it doesn't break within shipment. Um, so, you know, but people will always talk to you about shipping and they'll be like, oh, how come it can't be free shipping? And just tell them, well, remember wine is heavy. So at least you're getting it for $15. There are wineries that are around and feel free to do the little math checking yourself on that too. Um, I know a friend of mine just told me, she's like, I just got winery shipped from like down the street to me, six bottles of wine and it was $45. So we have some really good shipping. So just, you know, people might complain 
but hopefully it doesn't make them lose the sale. And when they realize like how heavy it is to actually ship that. I know one time I shipped a pillow to my niece and I think I, the pillow cost me $20 to ship in like a priority package. It was crazy. Um, but anyway, when you're checking out, those are always fun little options to, to try um, and to see. And if they don't want those six, those extra bottles, be like, all right, no problem. You can just deduct them from there and go back down to the six that they had. Next time. So the six that they had, this little thing will keep popping up. And then you can go to checkout. Now, if this person has, um, is a current customer and they have or they have a promo car promo or a gift card they click this little area right here and then you could enter the gift card information or if it's them and they have actual um reward points it would say reward points right here too that they could apply to that order so that's how they do that is right there at this little carrot it's called a carrot or maybe it's an arrow button and maybe it's a carrot when it's this way I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, this is where they would put in their promo codes or their gift card codes, and then you click apply. Make sure that they click apply after they do that, okay? Um, and then they're gonna check out. So when you're checking out here, you can also send it as a gift if you want. Um, if you send it as a gift, it does alert the person that a gift is being sent um, from One Hope. Um, you'll see the summary over here. Note that the summary and the totals that are over here is the retail pricing, and then it gives the discounts. So if you were to put in the mystery wine pack, it'll say maybe 145, but it, look at the total. It'll give you the total of like the $99 over there. Um, so don't get alarmed when you see this subtotal and be like, Ooh, wait, wait, it's $190, what? Look through the whole thing. Take the moment to, to pause and, and read that and also show that to your customer if you're doing it with them in front of you. Um, now, if somebody has a, a One Hope account, you can log in here or you can continue as a guest. I will log into my account because remember, I'm in an incognito window, so it doesn't know. If you are entering new customers, you do want them to create an account. When they create an account, they are able to get host root or wine rewards not host rewards they could get host rewards if they're hosting the event otherwise they get wine rewards for every purchase you get five percent back in wine rewards five percent back in wine rewards which is really good um that's free wine nothing tastes better than free wine right um or they can continue as a guest uh i don't recommend continue as a guest because then they don't get the wine rewards so create uh, i already have my account so i'm just going to log in here or you can log in with facebook or google now it should log me in. And then once it's logged in up at the top, it does also say this little top bar up here it will say who you're shopping for. So now I'm shopping for myself and I'm my own host because it was my own event that I do locally. Um, are, am I sending a gift? Yes or no or no. This one I'm not going to send a gift, so I would say next. Um, but I recommend for you to definitely play with this and see a lot of people do say that they are sending a gift, even though they're entering an order for a customer, because that gives you the option to write them a little note. So you can say, hi, Maribel, thank you so much for supporting uh, Mercy's cause. And you know, I hope you enjoyed the wine. Please text me if you have any questions or comments, blah, blah, blah. And then that's a great place that you can put your personal information to share with that person and they receive that in their shipment. It's also a good place that if you are sending a gift to put the little gift note, because then it's sent in the little envelope to the person. Um, but if you're not sending a gift, just pre press next and walk through the checkout process. So, um, once you are done with that event um, and after you place that order, it will automatically appear in the guest orders tab of your event. So you can go back in here and you can say, oh, look at who ordered from this event. That's awesome. Um, this will give you the status of the guest orders. It'll give you the order number. So if anything's going wrong, um, this is a good example. So. For instance, Andrea, she was not available. Um, actually, she 
was not available. So FedEx left a note on her door. So she had it rerouted to the nearest FedEx center because she was going to be gone for a day or two. So that's what this little status means. Um, these mean that it was delivered. This means that it's a wine club. She's a subscriber. So her next wine club shipment will be sent out. Um, you can track their orders, all their information here. Also, when you enter, you can see right away where the host rewards are at. You can also see the charity information. So you can see, oh, at the end of that host order, or that event, you can be like, oh, this is where we're at. This is all your stats. It's all done for you. It's so easy. Like, you got to love it, right? Um, and again, this is where you find the order number for the event. So the event page. And here's a quick little like hint or tip too. All event pages are onehopeline.com forward slash event forward slash a number. That number is the event ID right here. So that's just a little caveat to figure out like, oh yeah, what is that event ID number? Or what is that event? So even if you just have a list and you keep a list on your phone of all your event ID numbers, then you know it is onehopeline.com forward slash event forward slash X, Y, Z. Now, when you come in here to close this event, it'll ask you, are you sure you wanna close? And you can close at your event. When the event is closed, that's when the foundation uh, will send the donation check to the charity that's listed on here. Um, and that check will be sent the month after it closes. So if you close it in the current month, it's sent out the middle of the next month to that um, organization, okay? Um, and then you can always check back with that information too to see if it was on here, if it's processed, if it's been sent. Uh, you can tell that by looking at your closed events over here. You can see if it says processed, that means that it was processed. Um, these were closed and this is open because nothing is, there was no sales in here. But you can see that was processed, that one was processed. So that was processed, so they all received their checks for that. So I hope this helps explains a little bit about how to enter the orders. Um, again, I always recommend for anybody who is doing any of these programs with One Hope and for you as a cause entrepreneur, can't figure out how to stop sharing my screen. Oh, here we go. For, for you to just play around with your website, um, enter a couple or not enter, but fake enter a couple of the orders because you can go all the way through the ordering process until you hit the button that says place order um, and because then you don't place the order but you can go through all of it so if you need an estimate for something if you want to see how the website works what the customer experience is definitely go in and play with that because that is the your best learning opportunity right there it's right here in front of you on your computer it's your website so if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out, let us know, uh, let me know or your own personal upline and I'm happy to help and I hope you have a fantastic day. Cheers.